Oklahoma is holding this Red Raider offense that averages over 500 yards. They had only 64 in the first half. You go back to first down, they've had uh, under 20 yards on 12 first down plays. They're, start, they're stopping them from the get-go. Yeah, and Oklahoma's defense now has imposed its will on this football game. Witness two safeties. Mm -hmm. The statistics that you cited, the Oklahoma offense been very, very functional, and they've imposed their will on Tech's defense. Witness an 11-play drive, 10 runs that culminated in a strong touchdown run. Right now, Oklahoma dominating all aspects of this ball game. Now for Texas Tech, though, at least you'll get the ball to start the second half. Probably at about the 12-yard line, and Oklahoma's defense picks up where they left off. This time, the kickoff coverage. Let's take a look at some of the numbers from the first 30 minutes of play. That tells the whole story right there. Cliff Kingsbury, only 62 yards throwing the football. They average almost 400. And I said at the top of the show that the turnovers might be the key to the game. The only turnover Texas Tech has intercepted Oklahoma. So sometimes the statistics lie. <laughs> That's exactly right. Most people picked Texas Tech fourth nope, in the Big 12 Conference this year in the South. Nobody expected them to be here tonight. They have earned the right to play for the South title, but they need a lot of points quickly. Anderson keeps his feet, and you know that is probably one of the very few times he's kept his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage. Here's Craig Sager. Well, if you're wondering what kind of speech Mike Leach gave his team, let me put it this way, it's a little bit of everything. It's a motivational speech and a critical speech. He ripped them and he massaged them. He said, you're sitting around, you're getting pushed around. The key is tempo and composure. He asked for the big 12 South title, but there's a lot more at stake, including pride. Right? Craig, I wonder if he broke any Dan McCartney uh, clipboards, huh? Pass is incomplete, intended for Mickey Peters, was juggling it. Second drop of the night for Mickey Peters, normally sure-handed. The last time our light shone on Texas Tech, Mickey Peters didn't get to play. It had a concussion. It had a concussion they suffered against Texas A&M. So he didn't play, and that was very unfortunate for Tech. It's a big part of their offense. He's got to catch the football, though. And Peters comes out. Third down and three. The crowd getting back into it. Another sellout crowd here in Norman. Oklahoma brings five. They come off the corner, and Kingsbury is going to be dropped the fourth sack of the night, this time from Brandon Shelby, the sophomore out of Kansas City. And this is where the total lack of a running game hurts you because Oklahoma was not respecting that at all. They knew that they had to throw the football, so what they did was sit on every short route that Texas Tech could possibly run. They were going to let Cliff Kingsbury throw the ball deep and over their heads and try and make a play that way, but they weren't going to give up a three-yard hitch route and let them get a first down. He had nowhere to go with the ball. Another sack for Tech and Oklahoma. It put his block! Touchdown, Oklahoma! Peoples with a touchdown! Brandon Shelby with the block. Peoples, the recipient, and the Sooners hang six more on the board. Watch where Brandon Shelby goes for the block point. Excellent job because he's well coached. He doesn't go right for the punter. He goes for the point. He knows how many steps that Great House takes, goes to that spot, blocks the ball, and Will Peoples, who we saw emerge this year when we were here for the South Florida game, adds another touchdown, this time on special teams. First punt blocked on Clinton Greathouse this year. One more look at it again, Charles. Yep. Right to the block point, six more points for the Oklahoma Sooners. And they are dominating this game in Norman. First quarter, this took under one and a half. And now Texas Tech in the biggest hole they've been in this year with any hope of a comeback. About 13 block kicks since Bob Stoops has been head coach here in Oklahoma. From the 10, 
And the Sooners doing a great job converging. You know, behind every great player is a great mom. Quentin Griffin is no exception. Here's Aaron Andrews. That's right. I'd like to introduce you to my very special guest, Miss Barbara Griffin. She made the six-hour drive here from Texas to root her son on on his senior night. He's had a terrific four years here at Oklahoma. Are you sad to see it come to an end? Actually, I'm not, but I've enjoyed every four years, and this is Carmo's the best. I am so excited for him. Now, we've got a little bit of dirt on Quinton. His coaches and his teammates say he's very shy. Reporters can't even get four words out of him for an interview. You know the real Quinton. Tell us, is he that shy? No. It's full of questions. It's question after question with me anyway. Now, he might not say much to, you know, his teammates or the media, but he really opens up to me. He's not that shy. It's been rumored his mentor, his idol, Barry Sanders. You know a little bit about his admiration for him. Well, Barry Sanders is one of his favorite players, if not his favorite. Um, he has posters, T-shirts. He even goes on the Internet to print or whatever he can of Barry. So that's his favorite player, I think. Mr. Griffin, thanks so much. Guys, back up to you. Now, Foy Munlin can't uh, get the handle on it. Now, Quick, Quick Griffin still has some football to be played. Mom, he's still got a couple more games to have the opportunity to watch him. He's a great young man, though. Yes, he is, and, and she mentioned his admiration for Barry Sanders, and I think that Quentin Griffin's style as a person mimics Barry Sanders. As you mentioned, from Humble, Texas, shy retiring type, hands the ball to the referee after he scores a touchdown. Just a great all-around young man. Third and two. Throw it out to Welker. Gets the first down and some running room. Crosses the 50 down to the 48-yard line. Jimmy Wilkerson finally tracking him down from behind. Type of play that you need if you're Texas Tech and type of play that they've used all year long. This is what I call a people play. Wes Welker is one of their better players, right? To get the ball in his hand somehow. This time they do with a long swing pass, 23-yard gain. Texas Tech's in business in Oklahoma Territory. That is their biggest game of the night, Charles. Biggest game of the night, Charles. Yeah, you got to find the guys who make plays yeah. for you and get the ball to them no matter what. First and 10, Kingsbury finds the intended receiver down to the 39-yard line. It's Mickey Peters. The junior out of Weatherford, Texas, his first reception of the night for the former high school quarterback. Here, Bassey on the coverage. And that time, Cliff Kingsbury was able to come off of his first option, trying to throw a hitch to the wide side of the field and come inside to Mickey Peters. Second down and 10. The Sooners showing blitz, and here they come again. Kingsbury throws it away. Tipped. Intercepted Oklahoma. Antonio Perkins, his fourth interception of the year. Looks like Tommy Harris may have gotten a piece of it from that defensive tackle spot, and Perkins is able to pick it off. We often hear about the zone blitz from Oklahoma, and Tommy Harris fell off into coverage as a defensive lineman and, and tipped the ball that Antonio Perkins intercepted. Remember the first half when I said that Nate Hibble needs to throw the ball at the feet of his, of his receiver on a screen pass that wasn't going to work very well? I think the same thing happened there with Cliff Kingsbury. The timing of the play was all off. He tried to force it a little bit. Harris made the big play. Antonio Perkins with the interception. How about the Sooners have forced a turnover in 44 of the last 48 games. Full start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. And they've had one interception in 33 of the last 37. The numbers last week versus Texas and tonight, quite a difference. That pretty much says it all. <laughs> I mean, I'll have to draw, illustrate yeah. anything. You know, look at the touchdowns. Zero, an interception after the last play. But Jay, they just can't get the rhythm or the tempo together. Key words that you mentioned earlier. Well, it's now seven consecutive games. The Sooners have had at least two interceptions as Quentin Griffin tackled by Rodney McKinney. McKinney, the senior out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Making the tackle was number 95. Well, fans, for exclusive news and recruiting coverage of your favorite teams, all you have to do is log on now to Rivals.com. 
Well, all the coaches talking about uh, who's signing where, who's orally committing here. Here in Oklahoma, they've got Bob Stoops telling us yesterday they're right on track where they want to be, getting the commitments they need. Mike Leach telling us the same thing. Dibble swings it out to the far side. Griffin dodges one tackle, leans forward, picks up eight on the play. I'll tell you, Coach Leach has not given up. He is challenging his offense. Now Jeff, this looks like the massaging Jeff. time. Yeah, and, and it's what Craig Sager mentioned at the half. You can, you can rip them a little bit, but you've got to build them back up before they go back out. 